Hi, I've spoken before how I thought the 1980s was a great time for camera design, in particular in relation to single lens reflex cameras. You've got the likes of the Olympus OM-1, the OM-2, the Canon A-1, um, glorious cameras. And in the early 80s, a name came back to photography, the name Contas. It hadn't really gone away. It was a German company, um, part of the Zeiss Group. And in the 1980s, they had an agreement with a Japanese company for the Japanese company to start manufacturing cameras. And the 137, 139 came out, I think about 1981. And I've talked about this in the previous vlog. In 1986 came the 167. During the 80s, people were interested in automation. They wanted aperture priority. They were getting interested in program and other ways of making photography quicker. And the 167 is, has lots of new ideas in it. It has aperture priority, AV. It has a um, uh, uh, manual mode. It has a um, time mode. It has a program mode for low um, depth of field, a program mode for high depth of field. Um, it has a motor rhyme built in as well. You can do single shots, continuous shots. One of the things you need to slightly watch is the lenses are slightly different. It's the same basic mount as the 137-139. However, these are called MM lenses. And on the smallest aperture, the f22, that will then allow you to do program modes. On the pre-lenses, you can only do aperture priority and aperture priority and manual. This camera has a lovely planar lens. It's great lens, but it's not a MM lens. The MM lenses are often signified by the fact that the aperture is in green there. So I switch on the camera here, like so, and I've got my different modes. By pressing the mode and pressing this button over here, I change from the TV for time value, AV for aperture value, M for manual, program high, program, program low. For my memory, but I might have got this wrong, that is in the depth of field. Um, and you just risk for through those. You've got plus minus um, aperture value here. The camera is very ergonomic. It fits in the lens very hand extremely well. The motor line was super. Um, the lenses were um, would fit Yashica cameras. They were manufactured by the same company as Yashica. Yashica were often an ideal second body for the camera and are great lenses that um, if you want to get a cheap lens for your contacts, you can easily get the Yashica mount. Um, they're really good to use. I've had a couple of films through this. The last film, I wasn't quite convinced about some of the exposure values, but it was under um, quite changeable weather. Um, but the previous film, in, I was very pleased with. It's got a film in at the moment, so I can't shoot a ray. Something I really like about it is the you get lots of information in the viewfinder. You've got the aperture, you've got the shutter speed, you've got the number of shots that you've taken. So you've got all that information in the viewfinder and it's a very clear LED screen. As I say, you've got the motor rind. The covering on these 
seem to last slightly better than on the previous cameras. They often deteriorate quite quickly. These seem a bit more resilient. Um, as I said, a nice camera to use, a lot cheaper than the Nikon F3, F4, will do, I think, basically as much. Some people sometimes question the reliability of this camera. I've had no problems with this one. Um, they are slightly cheaper than the next model up, but the, um, I think it's the RS. Great thing about them is the lenses. You can, as it says, you can get the Yashica lenses. I think it's a camera with style. I think it's a camera with maturity. It's definitely different to some of the multi-mode cameras that came later. And I think that's quite a nice factor of it. So if you get your hands on one, they are great fun to use and the quality is excellent. Thank you for watching.